Welcome to part 8 of our Endwalker Let's Play. Last time we finished off the first of the two quest lines um, that we could pursue once we got to Charlian. We were reprimanded by the forum for trying to figure out exactly what they're up to, but we did learn that they have a mission that started at least 270 years ago when they discovered something in the ethereal sea. Um, and they are continuing towards that goal instead of helping out Eorzea. Um, what that goal is, we don't know, um, but it seems to be that they're collecting quite a lot of things from quite a lot of places for a potential migration somewhere. Um, but I guess maybe we'll find out about that at some point. But today we're going to talk to Thancred and hopefully go off an adventure to New Land. Thancred is eager to set forth for Thabnair. Do we get some Amrilassi? I have Kryle's instruction in hand. If you're ready to set out, then so are we. Having been to Thabnair before, I can travel by Etherite, but what of the rest of you? Another sea voyage would waste time we do not have. Kral is of the same mind and has already secured the aid of the good folk of the Confluence. We'll take ourselves there. The Confluence, thou sayest? I'm afraid so, my friend. Yeah, question? <laughs> thou wilt recall the hunt for Iceheart, and whose sanctuary we delivered thee owing to the knowledge of our comrade Moonbreda. Mumbrida was an authority on etherology, a field of study she did embark upon in pursuit of her parents' example. Both are authorities in their own right, and both are researchers at the Confluence. Haven't you gone to see them yet? I attempted to do so earlier, but to my shame, my courage failed me at the last, as it hath the many times I thought to reach out to them after sending that fateful letter. Neither time nor introspection have revealed unto me the words I should speak, and thus have I kept my silence. Whether you come with us or no is your choice, and yours alone. If it is too difficult, we'll manage. Thou art kind to say so, but I have no intention of forsaking our cause. I shall go to the confluence, and I shall face that which hath long been overdue. If it's settled, then let us be off. When we arrive, we should look for a researcher named Kite. Or Kit. We shall see. It might be something completely different. I can't pronounce anything. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Are they, like, right here? all the way to the etherite to come back. Well now, this is rather a lot of stern faces. Are my library books over to you again? <laughs> Not to our knowledge, we're associates of Kryle, the students of Baldissian. We seek passage to Thavnir and understand that you can assist us. Ah, uh, the test subjects. Welcome, test subjects? What? Test subjects? Oh, you hadn't heard? Well then, allow me to explain. So in order to travel to an etherite, you ordinarily need to be attuned to it beforehand. Otherwise, you can't use it as a beacon to seek out while you're a mess of ether hurtling along the life stream. An inconvenient but incontrovertible limitation of etherite teleportation. 
But what if I were to tell you that there's a way to travel to an etherite without being attuned to it? A way to teleport instantly to places you've never been. For long years we've labored to make such travel possible, that people might move about more freely. I've finally done it. We've created a new kind of etherite that doesn't require attunement. Truly, that changes everything. Have, have we, are we the first test subjects though? Well, my language may have been a bit misleading. The user need not attune to these etherites, but the etherites themselves must have been pre-attuned to each other, thereby facilitating travel between the two points. But it just so happens that of our first test pair of etherites, one has been installed here in Charlian, and the other over in Yedlamad, a port town in Thabnair. As you may know, our nation has long maintained strong ties with Radzahan, and indeed we owe much of this breakthrough to the contributions of their alchemists. So to sum up, we're to test these etherites, how fortuitous for you. I should mention that an accident has impaired my ability to channel ether. Will this be a problem? Not at all. As a matter of fact, you might say these etherites are made for people like your good self. The magic imbued within will whisk you away without any effort on your part. A veritable dream come true, and far be it for me to worry about such things, but do we have permission to make use of your shiny new invention? The only permission required is yours, so assuming you're willing, we're all set. It may come as a surprise, but we actually struggle to find test subjects. Most people seem to have an unreasonable fear of their souls gradually disintegrating as they drift helplessly in the life stream. In the statistically unlikely event that something goes over, I mean, we, we've had friends lost in the life stream, right? I believe Thancred himself was lost in the life stream, so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they feel about this. But it's plain that you aren't most people, haha. <laughs> Mistress Crowl truly knows how to pick them. What can you imagine if all the scions just whoosh out of existence because of this etherite? If I might change the subject, are Master Wilson and Mistress Bloida not present today? Oh, you didn't hear? They've recently resigned their posts. Their expertise was needed elsewhere. A large-scale project helmed by the forum itself, as I understand, but I'm not privy to the details. I see. Any other questions? No? Then let's get going before you change your minds. Please see to your preparations and head outside to the Etherite Plaza. I'll be along shortly. Okay, I thought this was going to be our etherite. Apparently there's just lots of, lots of etherites in here. I don't know how they feel about this. The words unsaid yet weigh heavy on my heart. I shall devote mine all to our task in Fabnir. Given my experience with teleportation, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have reservations, but I'll trust in Kryl. I shall teleport the tried and trusted way. Good luck. Yeah, that, that makes sense, Estinia. I, I would be right there with you. Was it? Three. I am already attuned to the crystal in Thavnir. He does not trust you. <laughs> you are? Oh. I would have preferred more uh. test subjects. Oh, well, never mind. If our three travelers could line up here, please. And I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Oh, and one last thing. You might experience. 
experience a teensy weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. Oh, that, that's so nice to tell us now. <laughs> what? Let's hope he winds up clothed. I feel like when we saw him last after he entered the ethereal sea, he was only dressed in a squirrel. All right, where is Thabner? Will Charlie in? Oh, it is also an island. Are we just gonna be island hopping this entire expansion? I'm I'm totally here for that. Oh, it's so bright Thabner, and colorful here. Home to city state Rods at Har. Rising from the southeast waters of the bounty, this Isle of Plenty served as the battleground for a conflict between two peoples. Their cultures bled into one another until a unique amalgamation was distilled from the chaos in a process not unlike their precious alchemy. Once solidified Whoa. as a single nation, an adamant stance of neutrality would hold invaders at bay. For a time. Is it the tower that sprung up? It looks very different than the others. We made it in one piece. Now across this vibrant isle creeps a fog of malice. What choice do you have? <gasps> what chance? <laughs> I think he thinks he made the right choice. Yeah, this is not the preferred mode of travel. Against such an insidious foe. It's really neat. I love how vibrant this is. Like, but it, it doesn't overpower everything. Like, it really blends nice with all this greenery. I feel like we're gonna need a few days to recoup. <laughs> Seen fairer faces after a bout of bad shellfish. <laughs> Let me bring you something to drink. That should help settle your bellies. There was a note with Kryle's instructions. Don't let Astinian roam the markets alone. Oh, right. He's alarmingly bad with coin. You managed to will yourself to your feet, but given your condition, will you be able to reach a Stinian in time? Oh no. It, it can't be a large market, right? Oh, I see him. Oh. What the heck? I am not allowed to touch that etherite, apparently. Ether sickness every time I touch an etherite. Oh my gosh. Or maybe that's just supposed to happen and it just happened to coincide with me getting near the etherite. Oh my gosh, we're gonna die. You there. I need free drink, something that helps with ether sickness. But the Manusia? A traveler, or I mean, greetings, greetings and welcome. You're a wise good sir to come to me. My special amrelassi, made with only the finest and freshest ingredients, is famed for calming unruly bellies. By way of a warm welcome to Thabner, I'm pleased to offer it to you for the low, low price of 19,800 gil for not one, not two, but three bottles, a bargain amongst bargain. I feel like this is a scam. Hmm. He's just, he's made it very expensive for the tourist. 
The price is high road robbery, and you want to say as much to Astinian, but you realize any words of warning you cry out would be accompanied by your last meal. You must stand before Astinian and using gestures deny that the deal is fair. All right. All right. Deny. No. Hmm, I thought you could barely stand. What do you need to tell me that's so urgent? What do you need to deny? Wait, I shouldn't buy the lassie? This merchant is swindling me. Wah! It's a sincerest apology, sir, but I appear to have my prices confused. It's actually 1,890 gil for the three bottles of lassie. <laughs> that confusion would have been quite costly for both of us. Very well, then. Your coin. Well, that was good. Apparently, Astinian has the looks of somebody who can be swindled. Here, a bottle for each of you. Take them to the others and get some rest. I'll be back after I've explored the town. Oh my god, look at this elephant man. Oh my gosh. He looks very angry. Alright, hopefully our ether sickness is over, because that was very annoying to move. Praise be to the twelve, my stomach doth loosen its death grip. My heartfelt thanks to thee and Astinian, and to the fine fruits of this land. You are in time? Excellent. You spared us to Taru's wrath. Sweet, sweet release. If you haven't already, you should have yours too. Right, I'm ready to get on with it. That lassie truly worked wonders. Back on your feet, I see. The the hair what what happened? I I bound it. This is the most I could do against this heat short of sh shedding my armor. May I ask where you got the cord for it? A local vendor. The man said it's a Thavnarian weave, tough and not easily unraveled. And how much did it cost? 9,400 gil? A steal, I was told. Tis nothing fancy, but I've always valued function over- Wow, 9,400? Those are like a dollar at the dollar store. Like. You know, like, for, like, a pack of, like, 20. <laughs> That's incredible. I dare say not even Elfino could hold a candle to you. That's true. Tataru's gonna be pissed. It's not uncommon for merchants to set their prices high, but doesn't it seem excessive here? Are all Hanish merchants so unscrupulous? I don't think we should judge them as a whole. Expected the Azure Dragoon to put up... Yeah, right? On that subject, I shall refrain from making comment, yet I cannot help but observe that the merchants seem overzealous in their pursuit of profit. Claiming Thavnir as its dominion, the nation of Radzat Han hath long thrived as a hub of commerce. In the beginning, there were the Arkasadara, a Matanga tribe indigenous to this island. Over time, they came to be joined by other races, and through their intermingling, a culture rich and distinct did emerge. From alchemy to textiles, the products of Hanish culture have come to be celebrated and coveted the world over. A development only aided by the nation's prime location as a waypoint betwixt east and west. All of this have combined to make a trading power of Rods at Han, yet such a status cannot be taken for granted. Nay, it must needs to be maintained through judicious governance and stringent regulation. Neither of which I see any evidence, given that merchants at a gateway town are free to fleece hapless travelers and tarnish the reputation of the nation at large. Just so, that opportunistic pricing is rampant thus suggests that oversight is much weakened. 
or mayhap that the people have fallen upon hard times. Whatever the truth may be, it would be prudent to ascertain the current state of affairs. Prudent and practical, aye, we've not to lose by learning more. So ere we seek out Kryle's acquaintance, shall we see what information we can gather here in Yedlamad? Excellent. We didn't exactly get off to a flying start, but we'll make up for it. Ooh. Oh, we probably already have this hat, but yay for things. His stomach behaving once more, Thancred is ready to get to work. Right, let us split up and make inquiries in town. Cha-Cha, the pier is yours. Once we've learned what we can, we regroup by the etherite, off-putting though the mere sight of it may be. Alright, can we uh, attune to this now? I see our destination. All the destinations have been really easy to find today, which I'm, I'm happy for. Oh, I guess we need four of them, though. The crate is laden with fruits, but they're on the verge of spoiling as if they have been left too long. slow survey. Ooh, let's look over there. Look at those purple mountains. I really like that. It's a nice backdrop. Gazing out from the pier, you spy boats moored off nearby isles with the silhouette silhouettes of larger seafaring vessels farther away. Compared to other ports you have visited in the past, there appears to be very little activity. All right, I think this guy wants to talk to us. Jinalil. What am I doing? Oh, recording my sales. Still do it daily out of habit, though I don't know why I bother. Hardly sell anything these days. Business has never been this terrible, but I suppose things could be even worse. I could have a consortium to keep afloat, like Calzal. I don't envy his position. Better to be alone with my little operation, I've come to realize. You're a traveler by the looks of you. If you have a moment, perhaps you could pay Calzal a visit. He'd be glad for tidings from abroad. Like as not, you'll find him at the Saltwind Sails, the Harbor Guild, building across the water from here. Alright, let's see. No, nothing over here, but it looks like there's stuff across the water there. Lots to explore. Alright, where have we not looked? Oh, there we go. Let's go talk to Pepperaz. Well now, if it isn't a traveler, you're a rare sight in these unsettled times. People have been giving us a wide burst since that accursed tower suddenly appeared on Naranair. If it just stood there and loomed ominously, perhaps things would be fine after a fashion, but no. It had to spawn fell fiends as well. We still have our lives thanks to the Radiant Host, but business is as good as dead. What'll become of us, only the gods know. Alright, let's see what's going on with Calzal. The Dalmascans aren't coming, but we already have everything they ordered. What are we supposed to do with it? I don't know, but yelling at me isn't going to help. All I know is that their plans have changed, and that's that. Look, you must have known this might happen. The Empire is at war with itself, and the provinces are in chaos. 
And then there's the tower sitting on our doorstep spitting out monstrosities. The city has its defenses, but we've been afforded no protection out here. We can't blame foreigners for not wanting to take the risk. But this will be an enormous loss. All right, all right, forget about the dumbaskins. Surely some ships are still coming. We have fresh produce, handicrafts, medicines, all the perennial Hanish favorites. Our consortium works closely with merchants and artisans to supply only the finest wares. Quality is guaranteed. I know all those things, Kalzal, I do. Which is why I regret to say I have nothing for you. All voyages have been canceled or indefinitely postponed. And you are? Wait, you're a foreigner, are you not? A merchant. Please tell me you're a merchant. Um, I see. That's a shame. I'm sorry, but we're discussing important matters. If you need something, please talk to one of the others. Um, excuse me. But my name is Matsya, and I'm here to see Kalzal. Is he a merchant? Do you have time for him? Oh, it seems he's busy. I'll come back later then. Well, he's over here wanting all this business, but then when it comes, he is not there. All right, how do I get where I want to go? Oh, I think I see. Yeah, I just love how the colors pop over here. Yes, can I help you? Ah, I remember seeing you back in the guild. You want to speak with Kalzal too, did you? I'm Matsya, a fisherman of Akiali, a nearby village. I sell my catch to Kalzal, who offers it to foreign merchants, but he hasn't bought anything for a while now. When I heard that the consortium had been struggling, I became worried and decided to come and see him. Just as soon as he's free anyway, he's a hardworking man and I dare not disturb him. Matsya regards you nervously. Um, if I may ask, what is it that you do? An adventurer, you say, and you travel the world helping people? Then that must mean you're great at dealing with strangers. Please, won't you teach me to be like you? You see, I brought some fresh fish with me, the portion I couldn't preserve, and I want to sell them. The problem is, I'm terrible with people. I've ever only dealt with Calzal, and I can't talk to customers without getting my trunk in a twist. So please, as silly as it might sound, will you not peddle the fish in my stead and show me how it's done? If you're willing, please let me know, and we can begin at once. The events that follow cannot be skipped. You may wish to cancel Endy. Oh, we're not in the duty finder. And we're just gonna do the thing, so we've at least got a space. You'll do it then? Show me how to deal with the customers? I'm in your debt. Right. Please try peddling my fish to, shall we say, three people here in Yedlamad. I will observe you and learn. Matsya is now accompanying you. All right. We're just gonna have a gazillion of these. Uh, he's following us quests, I feel like. Fish, fish, I got fish here. Fresh fish, straight from the sea's bosom to your mouth. Yeah, let's, let's ask them how they're doing. Greetings to you too. I suppose I'm well enough given the circumstance. Things have settled down somewhat, but it was utter chaos when that tower first appeared, everyone grabbing whatever they could, trampling over each other to get to the city. Many remained there for now, but I could not stay away. Had to come back, continue with my life such as it is. Whether or not it was the right choice, only time will tell. It's too risky out 
here. Maybe you ought to move to the city too. There's no place like home, but don't do anything dangerous. Yeah. Oh, trust me, I don't. I make sure to keep well clear of the tower, and when more monsters emerge from it, I heed the Radiant Host's instructions. I hope they deal with it soon so we can get back to our normal lives. To the days when you could earn as much as you gave and tuck into a meal satisfied that you did good work. Speaking of meals, why not have some fresh fish today? Mm hmm. I feel like that's a good segue. Hmm, fresh fish, you say? Oh, you're a fishmonger. Heh, <laughs> when you bait me like that, how can I not bite? Very well, give me some of your fish. Thank you for your custom. The catch of the day is Shallow's Cod, delectable stewed in coconut milk, or baked with a sprinkle of salt. Woohoo, we made a sale. Go us. Now for two more. That's a nice top. A hawker, are you? Do you sell fruit by chance? If so, I want to buy some Amra. Let's say a dozen. They don't need to be export quality. Uh, yeah, what do you need so many Amra for? Why, for eating, of course. It may seem like a lot, but of late, I go through that much in no time at all. I'm a stock taker by trade, but with no vessels coming these days, the wares are beginning to pile up. By the same token, nothing is coming in from overseas, but not a day goes by that someone doesn't come asking when the next shipment is arriving for this and that and this and that. All of it wears me down, and I find myself feeling constantly hungry. Uh, are you sure you're actually hungry? I know how you feel. Thank you. A pity you don't sell fruit, but I enjoyed our little chat. It took my mind off my troubles for a moment. Oh no! And never mind. If nothing else, you left her with a positive impression. Let's move on to the north side of town, shall we? It's a good thing I don't work in sales. Because <laughs> we're shooting 50-50, which is not very good. Do we get to go deeper into town, though? We've never been over here before. Oh, look at- I love the purple rocks. I love that there's somebody making this game who just loves purple, because it was like purple over the first, in the trees, purple rocks over here. Just give me more purple, please. Everybody's wearing the same outfit. What is it? If you don't mind, I'm rather busy. Oh god, it's my stomach. Ugh. Ether sickness? No, no, nothing so unusual. In my hurry to get back to work, I just ate a little too quickly. Some fresh fish will settle your stomach, and mine are the freshest of all. I should take it easier. Yeah, I, I don't think we need to force the food on him right now. Would that I could, but I can't afford to be idle. Like as not, circumstances will surely get worse before they get better. And so I'm working as hard as I can while I still can, the better to be prepared. Uh, what an industrious young man you are. How do you intend to prepare? I hope with fish, so we'll, we'll go with that. By stockpiling supplies. For that, I need to earn coins so I can buy food, medicine, what have you. How about some fish for your supplies? Yeah, they're fresh caught. Aye, well fish wouldn't be bad, but I don't want to go through the hassle of preserving them myself. I'd rather buy stuff that's ready to store, so I'm afraid I'll have to pass on your fish. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be getting back to work. No, I think we should have chosen the other option. Too bad we couldn't make a sale, but we did manage to build something of a relationship. Thank you so much for your demonstration. It was a truly eye-opening experience. Come, let us return to the pier. I feel like we didn't do... Didn't do so good at that, but... Thank you so much for showing me how to talk to customers. 
You managed to sell to one of the three people you approached. It was difficult, but when you put your mind to it, you succeeded. Though you did fail too. But there are lessons to be learned in both success and failure. By applying yours, I'll endeavor to become a better peddler. I wonder if he could have made more sales or not. Still, there's only so much I can do alone. I hope that things will return to normal for Kalzal soon. I thought I heard a familiar voice. And who should it be but Matsya? Oh, it's Kalzal. Kalzal, have you finished your business at the guilds? So you were there too? Forgive me, try as I might, I can't find any buyers. With no ships coming in and hardly any going out, there simply aren't any options at this rate. So you can't buy my fish anymore? I'm just, I just realized, I'm like, where is he keeping these fish? All he's got are pants. I mean, maybe if he actually carried a basket or something, people would want to buy his, his fish. I'm sorry, Mats. Yeah, I truly am. But for now, you must peddle your own goods. But by myself, I can't. I mean, he did. I want to help you. I do. But as it stands, I can barely help myself. I poured my all into the consortium, and I'll be damned if I let it fall apart. I have friends and families depending on me, and I can't, I won't fail them. The sisters is my witness. Calzal. No, not to worry. Using what I've learned from you, I'm sure I'll manage somehow. Well, I had best return to my village. My thanks again, and please take care on the road. Tell them what we've learned about the people of Thavener and their hard times. I see you've been busy. Managed to learn a tidbit or two, I trust? I see. We also heard that the tower is affecting many locals' livelihoods, but to think that it would be to such an extent. For another notable, if not wholly unexpected, discovery, disappearances and kidnappings are disturbingly commonplace. As before, the culprits are almost certainly tempered imperial soldiers, and as before, they mean to use the faith of their hapless thralls to call forth a lunar primal, business as usual for the Tlaferoi. And this is where we will leave it for today, but I am excited that we got to visit a new place, even if I'm not sure what's going to go on here. Um, but I believe we still need to meet up with Kryle's contact to see about the tower. So hopefully we learn more about that next time. If you enjoyed yourself, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me via the links below the video. And I will see you next time for more adventures in Thavnir.